Hello, my name is Jason, and welcome to this class on yin flow yoga, or I sometimes also call it energy flow yoga. I'd like to go through some of the principles that we'll be uh, working on in this particular sequence. Uh, our main focus in this sequence is going to be physically the hips and the lower body. We'll be doing some upper body as well. Um, when I teach my classes, I often will go over the same points many times because those are points that we probably need a reminder of often. So in the style of yoga, I would say the majority of yoga in the West focuses primarily on posture. Um, the goal is to go as deep as possible into the posture and that's focusing more on the external. So you could say your power yogas, ashtanga, uh, Bikram, hot Bikram, and so on. Most of these are Yang forms of yoga, which is a valid form of yoga. Um, however, it's really just one small part of yoga. Okay, so there's a lot of other aspects that may not be covered so much, especially in Western teachings. And so the style of yoga that I'm going to teach you and show you is focusing much more on the internal. And then secondary will be the external. Okay, so the external will be the physical body, the internal is focusing on the mind and on the breath and even you could say on the emotional system and energy system. So to start with, um, our two principles that we're going to uh, make primarily are concentration, mental concentration, which is one of the limbs of yoga, and pranayama, <clears throat> which is another limb of yoga. The combination of concentration and pranayama then guide the mind into the body. So you could say that concentration is like a vehicle that leads the breath to certain areas. And if you haven't done this before, it's actually going to be more difficult than you think. So one of the illusions of yin practice or meditative practice is that it's easy, but of course most people don't do it. And why don't they do it? Because it's actually simple, but it's not easy. Uh, because it involves directly working with your mind and trying to learn how to focus it. And most of us don't like doing that. But my main goal in this practice is to focus on relieving stress. Um, so we're not interested in how deep you stretch. I mean, you're going to get a very deep stretch as we go along. At least most of you will, depending on your flexibility level. But more importantly, is you're going to learn how to concentrate your mind and relax. If you can learn how to concentrate the mind into the body, you can learn how to regulate your nervous system. Okay, so if we take stress, for example, I'll cover this a little bit more in this particular class and then I'll speak about it in different ways in the other classes. So stress, you have to look at it like a mental process that's happening. Okay, so when I'm stressed out, my nervous system moves into sympathetic. You have two nervous systems, parasympathetic and sympathetic. And again, I won't go into a lot of details on these. You can look that up yourself. But when I go into sympathetic, that's the fight or flight system. And in our society today, I think it's fair to say that probably in my opinion, because I teach a lot of classes every week, I also am a body therapist. In my opinion, I would guess that at least 75 or 80% of people are chronically stressed out. When you're chronically stressed out, your mind goes into contraction through uh, stressful thoughts, negative thoughts, but then it moves your nervous system into sympathetic. When your nervous system is in sympathetic, nothing functions properly because this system is there for when something's about to happen. If, if there's a danger and you have to allocate your energy to the limbs and to the muscles and get ready for fight or flight, or actually, for the most part in the West, it would be freeze because we have nowhere to discharge this energy, so we tend to freeze. We tend to start tightening up. As the nervous system tightens up, obviously, everything else tightens up. And this is happening from the mind. So you have to address the root cause of the stress and not the symptoms because normally what we're doing is just chasing symptoms in the Western model but not actually getting to the cause. Um, the cause itself is a problem to work with because it takes a lot of practice. Uh, we're talking about trying to take your mind, your mental concentration and bring it into the body and try to feel your body. Okay, and you'll see that the mind constantly disassociates, constantly goes into chronic thinking. Uh, you know this if you've ever, you know, lied in bed at night and actually had your mind harass you over and over. And then you begin to understand that this mechanism is rolling all the time. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on. And to do that, 
We need mental concentration and we need pranayama, which is taking the breath and learning how to control your breathing process. Your breath is the link between the mind and the body. It uh, essentially influences every system of your body, both physiological, emotional, mental, and energetic, if you're talking about the meridians and so on, um, or nadis, as they call it in yoga. Uh, so from there, uh, let's just come along. A lot of you watching this may have been to some of my practices before, and for some of you this is going to be brand new. Um, and it's all done just through repetition practice. If you're learning how to meditate, you can't expect a result right away. It's, it, it doesn't work that way. You have to actually work at it. Uh, most people will expect that they should be able to just relax at will. You know, you have a long stressful day, you get home, you just want to relax. Well, obviously you can't turn the mechanism on and off quite that easily without having already uh, learned how to do some of these principles. So from there, we're going to start lying down in Shavasana posture. So that's lying down on your back. We'll have the palms up. So to come down, you just have your feet. You could have your heels over at the corner of the mat. I'm going to lie down with the palms up, shoulder blades slightly together. And then as we go along through each uh, sequence, flow or hold, I'll give you detailed explanations. That's how I teach. I want you to understand why you're doing what you're doing and not just do it. There's no sense of saying just breathe. You have to know where you're breathing to, how you're breathing, and so on. So lying down, the first thing we'll do is a body scan. In yin practice like this, everything is done slower. That means the holds and the flows that we're going to do are at least one minute up to a couple minutes. And that will be explained a bit more after. So everything affects everything else. If you hop into practice really quickly, uh, basically just to try to get into it, get into the stretch or get it over with, you're going to lose a great benefit. So we have to start gently, taking the time, noticing what's going on in your body, and then take a note of what you feel. Okay, so maybe you have tension in different areas, maybe you have anxiousness, uh, maybe you feel flow in your body, maybe today you feel pretty good, who knows. But all you're doing is taking in information so that at the end of the practice you can compare notes and see what has changed inside your body, mind and emotional system. So periodically through this practice I won't be talking, I'll be giving you time to sink in, but I will be giving you reminders. So after I've taken in information, maybe 30 seconds or so, we'll begin with full diaphragmic breathing. And if you're not familiar with that, I will explain it. So belly breathing, that means taking the breath, dropping the diaphragm. The diaphragm sits underneath the rib cage. When I inhale, the diaphragm comes down and the belly expands. And as the belly expands, I try to move the breath all the way towards my upper chest, as though you're filling a bottle of water from the bottom to the top. If you already know some of the things that I'm going to be explaining, you can just go into it. But for a lot of people, this needs to be brought in a little bit more precisely as to what's happening. There's a real misconception on deep breathing. So a few things, often people will just stick their stomach out. So they'll inhale and they'll just stick the belly out, but they're not actually dropping the diaphragmic muscle. So Right here, when I inhale, the sheet of the diaphragm comes down and the belly expands open. That opens up the bottom of my lungs when the diaphragm moves out of the way. Then I move the breath all the way up towards the upper chest. So it would look kind of like this. So one way to look at it is the first thing to expand will be your lower belly. And the last thing to release is also your lower belly. If all you did for the next hour or forever, however long this practice is, is just breathe, you will feel completely different by the end of it. Okay, because as I said, we're working, our main concern is getting the nervous system to relax, really, you know. Okay, if you're more physically flexible, great, but what we're working on is to become more mentally flexible. And 
the breathing itself will begin to affect the nervous system. So it affects every system of your body, every part of your body is affected when the nervous system switches over to what's called parasympathetic. This is rest, renew, and rejuvenate. And that's not going to happen if you can't get your mind to relax a little bit and concentrate. So that's the most important part of the practice. We'll do this breath for another minute. So you're breathing from the lower belly all the way to the upper chest or as far up as comfortable. So you don't want to force your breath open, but as I inhale up, if I start to meet resistance somewhere in the chest, then just go to that resistance, maybe push into a little bit and then go back down. Okay, so one misconception in modern yoga is forcing the stretch. It's so common for people to constantly push the stretch as though if I go a little bit deeper, somehow that's going to benefit me. You can't force your body to open and you can't force your breath to open. If it's helpful for you, what you can do is place one hand on the lower belly, two inches below the belly button, and one hand on the solar plexus. And then this will help keep your mind from wandering. So you inhale into the bottom hand. Okay, so we'll breathe into here. And you'll notice where the top hand is. This is where the solar plexus, uh, the diaphragm is moving down and back up. Just taking a full breath already has a relaxation response in your nervous system. Slowing down like this can be challenging for those of you who have anxiety or who are generally impatient or who are generally chronically stressed. So you have to realize that as you slow down, if you begin to have things coming up for you emotionally, that's just part of your practice. It means it's already there anyway, so you have to work with it. The key here is don't resist whatever you encounter as we go along. So that's part one. We begin with the breath and you're going to use diaphragmic breathing as we go into all the different stretches, but we'll do a warm up now for the spine and the central energy channel of the body. So the second breath is called spinal breathing. So you're still going to do your diaphragmic breath from the belly all the way up and from the top back down, but you'll be moving your spine at the same time. So as I inhale into my lower belly, I'll begin to arch my back. And the deeper I inhale, the more I arch as I pull the breath all the way up to the upper chest. So you're coming into a full arch of your spine and your shoulder blades are slightly squeezed together. And then you're going to exhale and lower from the upper back and lower all the way down until you flatten out the spine. And as I flatten out the spine, what I'll do is tuck the tailbone between the legs a little bit and pull the chin into the throat, opening the back of the neck. So you're trying to flatten everything out. For some of you, you're going to find this is better to have the knees bent, it's up to you. If you have your knees bent, you want your feet waist width apart and you want your thighs and chins lined up in a straight line. So from here then, you can get a bit of a deeper arch. You're going to inhale. As though there's a string attached to your chest or solar plexus that's lifting you up like that. And then as you exhale, and then you're flattening everything out, tucking the chin and the tailbone. So what happens as you tuck the tailbone, you're opening and pulling down on the lumbar, right? So you're pulling your spine down. As you tuck the chin in, you're pulling the cervical up so you're decompressing the spinal column on the exhale and on the inhale you're compressing the spinal column you're also working the chest in the rib cage so let's do that for another minute or so maybe a minute and a half keep your jaw relaxed as well every time you can think of it when you clench your jaw it's creating a stress response in your nervous system I recommend that you go at a slow, deep breath, not to the point where you feel strain in your breathing, but whatever slow, deep breath is for you, that's how fast you're moving. 
as we go along through the practice and we're doing flows and holds, when you're doing the flows, less repetitions is better than more repetitions. Okay, we often think if I just do more, I'll get somewhere. But the reality is when it comes to relaxation, you have to learn how to slow down. You have to be okay with slowing down and some of the sensations that come with that, right? So you could have a sense of impatience come up. You could have a sense of irritation come up because we're very busy, all right? So our nervous system is on high amplitude. We've got to slow it down through the breath and through the concentration. So your key here is every time you notice that your mind is thinking and it will come in like that, you immediately pull your concentration back to what you're doing, whether it's a flow or a hold, and you maintain that as best you can. When the mind comes back in, which it will, and pull your attention away, you immediately again come back. The only way to learn how to do this skill and how to self-manage your own nervous system is through repetition and practice. So after you complete this next breath, this final breathing, We'll just take a moment to do what's called a check-in. So let your breath be whatever it is and then notice the center of your torso and notice if you can feel a little bit of energy circulating there in the form of a tingling sensation, wave expansion sensation. We'll do one more warm-up before we start working into some of the holds. The last warm-up, you're still going to work with spinal breath. Okay, and there's lots of different <clears throat> versions of what I'm so, uh, showing you, slight modifications. So I'm still working the arch of my spine, spinal breath, but I'll begin to bring in the arms and the rib cage and the shoulders and the upper body. So when you're going to inhale into the arch, so I start inhaling, the arms are floating up. Now, as they're floating up, I'm extending out of the shoulders. I don't want to float them up too relaxed, but not too rigid either. So you're reaching out, and as you inhale, keep reaching out of the fingers coming up into a full arch until you bring the back of your hands into the floor above you. And then from there, you're going to hold your breath in for anywhere between two and four seconds. So you inhale up to the top, full arch, hold the breath. And then as you exhale, still reaching out the fingers coming down in a wide arc. As the arms come down, your chin and tailbone once again is in motion and tucking. So as the hands touch next to your hips, you complete pulling the chin in. Obviously, you don't force it you know, to whatever degree your neck is okay with, and tuck the tailbone. And this is your full exhale. And from here, you're squeezing the breath out of your body, and you're going to hold it out again for maybe one to three or four seconds, something like that. Don't hold it out to the point where you feel panicky. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Then my inhale, reach up. We're going to do this for a little bit. So start to focus your mind deep into your spine, into the movement, into the breath. As you're inhaling up and reaching out in that arc, you're also lifting the rib cage up and away from the abdomen and expanding it. Keep your jaw relaxed. As the arms are coming down, the spine is in motion. Chin is tucking, tailbone's tucking, decompressing your spine. Squeeze the breath out. As you get used to these practices, obviously you don't have to follow my pace. You can go a little bit slower, you can go a little bit faster. I'd rather you not work to the point where you start to feel like you're holding your breath too long on both the inhale and the exhale. Um, there's different forms of breath. Some breath can bring you deeper into what's called catharsis, making contact with blocked energy or emotions. But in this one, we're focusing more just on relaxing the nervous system.
If you have any deep blockages in your shoulders or shoulder issues, when you inhale up to the top, uh, you don't have to bring the hands all the way to the floor. One thing I would like to emphasize is don't overstretch. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's super common in modern yoga for people to overstretch because instead of making integration the goal, they make the posture the goal. As though somehow if I go a little bit deeper into the stretch, that's going to help me. The reality is if you force the stretch too deep, your body's going to contract to protect the joint. So your tendons will contract, your ligaments will contract if you go to 100%. And that's fine if you're pretty limber, but as a body therapist, I've seen a lot of really nasty yoga injuries. And basically that's what happens when you put too much pressure on a joint. So if I'm trying to relax, I have to feel and listen to my body. I can't try to force it to relax. It doesn't respond to that. So after we've completed this spinal breathing with the upper body left, we'll bring the legs back down. And we're going to start to work into a hip series. A few explanations here. So when you're holding a yin posture, if you've ever done straight yin yoga in a class, uh, normally you're probably going to be doing five minute holds. Okay, so yin yoga is usually five minute hold, five minute hold, five minute hold. This is going to be more of a combination. So we usually need at least 45 seconds in a posture to start to release and stretch the tendons in yin yoga. So physiologically what you're trying to do is open up the connective tissue and you need time to do that. If you hold the posture for 15 seconds you're still working on the muscle. If you hold the posture for a half a minute to 45 seconds you begin to open the tendon. So we're going to probably work on anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half in each hold. Five minutes if you're not used to it is a long time. Okay so we'll work into that next. So we'll begin by bending the knees and we've got the feet flat, the arms down by your side. And then take a couple of deep breaths, just centering your mind. And then we're going to work into a hold for the groin. I'll give you a couple of modifications as we go along. So we'll take the left knee, bring it into the chest like this. Allow the right leg to hang out like dead weight. So the right leg is just hanging there with gravity and then you pull your left knee out to the left side using your hand, the strength of your arm. Keep your chin tucked in and when you start to meet resistance on the inside of the left groin, stop there. Don't force a stretch. Now go back to full belly breathing and begin to focus your mind into your left groin. So what happens now is the whole practice is meditation. The object of your meditation is going to be the body part that you're stretching or the flow that you're doing. So in this case, for my mind, the concentration, I go to the groin where I feel the tension or the pull and I begin to go into my breathing simultaneously. It's almost like you're splitting your awareness or integrating your awareness into both the leg and the breathing at the same time. The chin is tucked in. And then we'll hold this for another half a minute or so. And I will remind you many times that your mind is going to wander. When it wanders, you're no longer doing the internally in practice. Okay, so you have to be vigilant. Notice that it's wandering. Pull your attention back. Feel into the muscle fibers and tissues. Breathe into it. Continue breathing into it. Over time, we'll go into more advanced concentration exercises. Not in this particular practice. What's happening now after holding the stretch this long is the tissues are starting to open, especially into the tendons. So let's say I started here and by the end of it, I opened to here. You know, maybe that's an inch or an inch and a half, but that's the deep tension that you're getting into. Okay, so you're not working on muscle strength here. You're working primarily on elongation. And elongation does indirectly strengthen the muscles because they're more flexible. So that's part one. Part two, I'm going to bring my right knee up. I'll take my left knee back to my chest. And then using my hand like a lever, I'm going to start to go around the whole hip socket. So what it looks like is I'll push in 
to the inside range here. If you want to release this leg, you can, which will give you a slightly deeper stretch, and that actually applies for the groin stretch we just did as well. When the leg is straight, it'll be a deeper stretch in here. So coming around the hip socket, I'm going to inhale as I go away from me, and then use your hand like a lever, pull your knee in towards your chest, exhale, and your mind is now concentrated inside of your left hip socket and begin to pay attention to what do you feel in your hip socket? Where is the tightest area? Or an area that might have some discomfort in it? Still using pranayama, so exhale, pull the knee in towards the chest. Inhale, release the knee away from you, coming around. When I use the word pranayama, I'm referring to controlling your breathing. I realize that in Explanations of pranayama, sometimes they'll say, well, the only part that really is the pranayama part is the hold in between the inhale and the exhale. But for the purpose of this practice, pranayama is controlling your breathing, regulating your breathing, and in this case, in conjunction with the movement of your hip. Inhale away. Exhale, pull the knee deep into the chest. And then reverse it. So we're going to Pull the groin open to the outside. Inhale away from you. Inside range. When I say inside range, you can push the hand on the outside of your knee to the inside range, opening the inside of the groin. Exhale in. And now you'll begin to pay attention to where you're going to stop. So as you go around the loop, in your left hip socket, start to identify where you feel is the tightest point or the most painful point that you found, or a peculiar point. And then as you go around the loop now, you're going to start to locate that point and try to hold right over it. So adjust your knee position, leg position, until you think that you're right on the center of that tension. Once you're on the center of the tension, Hold, go back to full belly breathing, but maintain your concentration on that point. This is called biofeedback, creating a feedback loop between the brain and the body so that I can begin to influence the nervous system using only my concentration, my breath. I want to remind you again that this is completely based on your ability to concentrate. The more you concentrate your mind, the more the effect is on the area that you're concentrating on. The more that the mind wanders, the less that's happening inside. Because we're also working energy here. And then we'll continue into the counter stretch for the groin. I'm going to take my right hand and grab the outside of my left knee like this. I'll take my left arm 90 degrees out with the palm down. So you have the left palm down, stretched out. And then as I exhale, I pull my left knee to the right. And as soon as my left shoulder tries to come up off the mat, that's where you're at full stretch. Okay, so if I want to, I could come over like this, but you see my arm. So I'm not really getting anything extra from that. I want to isolate the shoulder and the arm like this. And then I'll pull across and you'll also get this fairly deep stretch coming through the shoulder, chest, down towards the hip. Head is turned to the left. You're looking towards the left hand. You can have your eyes open or closed in this case. And then reach your left fingers out like you're reaching for something that opens the rotator cuff. And then you're back to full belly breathing, diaphragmic breathing up the side of the body, focusing from the hip up to the shoulder. Keep your jaw relaxed. And keep maintaining that pressure with your right hand like a lever on your left knee. And again, the pressure is minimal. You're not forcing the stretch. You're just keeping a gentle weight there. If you force the stretch, again, the muscles will start tightening up. You're not going to release the stress tension that I'm talking about. Before we come out of this, bring your left palm up to the ceiling 
And as you're still holding the twist, squeeze your left shoulder blade towards your spine and you'll feel a release in the front deltoid and the pec muscle. That's a counter stretch. When I squeeze my shoulder blade in and I pull the rhomboid in, I release the counter muscle, which is the chest, and in a way you could also say the front of the shoulder. On your own, if you pause this, you can hold these stretches longer, by the way, if you do want to go into more of your three to five minute holds. Then we'll inhale onto our back. Exhale the left knee deep into the chest. And then inhale, release the left leg. We'll give the legs a little shake. And then what I'll ask you to do now is just check into your body. So periodically throughout the practice, we're going to check in and try to see what do I feel different. So right now, you've done a little bit of extra work on the left side. It should be pretty apparent that the left side feels different than the right side in the hip. Okay, how do you know that? Well, you have to go by what do you sense there. Some of the signs that there's more energy circulating, and I believe I mentioned this earlier, is a sense of expansion or tingling or a sense of flow or circulation. Try to identify that. And again, that takes concentration. Don't let the mind wander come in, feel your body. I will be giving less explanations as we go through this sequence on the right side. We have one more thing to do on the left hip, so we're going to bend the knees and we're going to work into the hip opener. So I'll take my left ankle, sit it on my right knee, and there's two parts of this stretch. The first part, I'll take my left hand to the inside of my left knee and push, and this is going to rotate the hip and you'll feel a stretch in the outside ligaments and tendons inside the glute. You want your chin tucked in so the spine is still open and you're pushing away and also upwards a little bit so that has that sensation of burning the hip and opening it out of the socket a little bit where the top of the femur connects to the ball. Breathing into it. This is part one. If the second part of this stretch is too intense for your knees or your hips, keep doing this. This is still a hip opener. It's not quite the same as what we're about to do. This next posture, I often won't go through all the names of the postures, but this one's called threading the needle. So what I do is I reach between my legs with my left hand and my right hand comes to the outside and I'll grab either the back or the front of my knee. It doesn't matter. It's the same stretch. If you have good flexibility here, you can grab the front of the knee. Now, to come into position, we're going to hold this one a little bit longer. Tuck your chin in so you feel the back of the skull opening. Relax your jaw. Slightly bring your shoulder blades together and then gently pull on your knee. Now, more is not better. Okay, so what that means is if I'm trying to release tension, I'll remind you again that if you pull as hard as you can, and let's say you come into what you think is more or less 100%, there's nowhere else to go, your body is going to contract. You can't expect to release something. So what I want to do is ease off maybe at about 90, a maximum of what I think is 95% of my full stretch here. And then concentrating the mind directly into your left glute, go back to full breathing from the belly to the upper chest and back down, diaphragmic breathing. And maintain the mind and the breath in the left hip as though you're injecting healing energy or prana into the tissues and on your exhale you can just observe the breath coming back down or I should say having the belly come back in and up What's happening in this hold is as you start to feel a little bit of opening in your left hip, if you start sensing that, then you can apply just a tiny bit more pressure. Okay, so you're not forcing the stretch. If you feel 
like your body's giving you the signal to go a little bit deeper, do that. If you don't feel that, then don't do it. You know, it's not going to be beneficial forcing the hip open, trying to force the hip open. And again, if you want to hold this longer, you can pause it. Otherwise, we're going to now release the right foot. It's coming down. And then I'll place my left foot down. I'll bring the knees together and we'll do kind of like, I believe it's called windshield wiper. So you just bring your arms out. You're going to exhale, drop to one side, inhale up, exhale like this, back and forth. and then releasing the legs. And we'll do a quick check-in again, noticing all the work that you've done so far. So obviously you'll notice the sensation in the areas that you specifically work, but you should also notice the sensation in the whole body. You've been doing controlled breathing now for quite some time in this practice. The more that I regulate my breath and bring it down, the more that my nervous system hopefully starts to move towards relaxation response or parasympathetic and remember that that's the goal of this practice. The side effect is that you'll become more physically flexible, but much more important is you'll become more mentally flexible and you'll learn how to regulate your own system. So we'll go through the same stretch sequence on the other side, we'll bend the knees. And then I'm going to allow my left leg to just hang over to the left side, like dead weight, and the right knee is coming to my chest. And then I'll pull the right knee out using the right hand into a groin stretch until I feel a pretty decent stretch. If you want a modification of this, and it might be a little bit deeper, you can have the left leg extended and over to the left side a little bit like that. So if I bring the left leg off center, that's going to bring a deeper stretch in through the groin. So that's a modification. There's a lot of different types of groin openers. If you've done a fair bit of yoga, you know that. In fact, there's modifications for almost everything. We can put a little spin on things. Back to full belly breathing, focusing all your attention inside your right groin. Keep your jaw relaxed. And also remember to try to keep that chin pulled in a bit so you're opening up the spine. Almost as though when you pull the chin in, you're reaching the crown up, lengthening the neck without forcing it. One thing you'll notice that regardless of uh, what's going on in the body or in the posture, the breath is going to change, or I should say because of the different posture. So if I'm in this position opening the groin, as I take a deep breath because some areas are stretched, I'll feel the breath differently. Try to notice that. So you're maintaining the concentration here, but you also notice how the breath opens everything up from the inside. So this is part one. And then part two, again, with the left leg straight or the knee bent, it doesn't matter, up to you. You'll take the right knee and now start to go through your circles. So as the knee approaches me and I come across, I'm uh, exhaling. And as the knee goes away from me, I'm inhaling. So coming around, I'll do this, bring the leg over. I find that to be a deeper stretch. So exhale, in using your hand like a lever. So if I want to stretch the inside of my groin, I'm pushing the outside of the knee, then I go away. If you want to release your leg completely, you can come all the way out like that as you inhale and come around and then grab the knee, or you can just maintain it so that the hand is always on the knee. Out into a groin stretch, across the top, exhaling inside range. We'll be reversing, so just go the other way. Inhale away from you, exhale in. And you'll begin to pay attention to where you are going to stop. So with your mind concentrated in your right hip socket, where is the tightest area or an area that has discomfort or feels peculiar. There could be a couple of them. Start to slow the movement down now until you feel like you've located that point with your attention. 
Okay, so as I come across, start to locate the point, and then I'm going to use my hand to hold my knee specifically on that area, and then you're back into full breathing, concentrating on that point. This is very similar to body scan meditation, except you're doing it inside the yoga practice. Body scan meditation, um, as you learn it, is actually one of the most effective ways to manage pain in your body. Not just strictly physical, but also emotional pain. They're often very interlinked anyway. And then I'm going to continue over into the twist. Okay, so if you haven't already done so, you'll have your left leg straight out, if your knee's bent. And then grab the outside of your right knee with your left hand, bring your right arm out 90 degrees, palm down to the side of the body, fingers stretched out, and then exhale, pull yourself to the left until you feel the right shoulder try to come up, and then you're at full stretch. So you're pulling yourself across, your head turns to the right, and then you're reaching out of your right fingers. You should feel that reaching opens your rotator cuff a little bit deeper. And then with your mind and your breath, go from your right hip up the side of your body to your right shoulder as you inhale. As you exhale, you can follow your mind back down. At first, the coordination of the breath uh, can be quite challenging for a lot of people. And I'll remind you again to not overstretch. If you start to encounter what feels peculiar to you, too much tension, you just release. Okay, it's always better to do a little bit less than a little bit more. As I mentioned earlier, it's extremely common for people to overstretch. And it's also common for a lot of instructors who made it to a high level of yoga to then have a lot of physical problems because the ligaments are now overstretched in the joints and you can't really shorten them again you know it's that's what happens when the ligaments get overstretched they don't really want to come back in at a certain point still holding the twist turn your right palm up to the ceiling squeeze your left shoulder blade into your spine breathe into that area you'll notice that that releases the front deltoid and chest muscle on the right side And then we'll inhale back to center. Exhale, pull the right knee to the chest. And then inhale, release the right leg when you're ready. And we're gonna come back into Shavasana posture again. I'm noticing the work that you just did on the right side. Try to take a couple of deep breaths and also notice if your nervous system is starting to decompress a little bit, starting to go down. When I say going down, one way to look at it is when we're stressed out mentally, we're uptight. All the energy is going up and it's being pulled up into the mind and, or I should say into the brain because the mind actually is not just found in the brain, but the whole body. But Everything starts to contract here, so we're pulling up. What I need to do is ground myself and try to relax and get my energy down to the belly and then down the legs and into the feet. So I have to integrate that energy that's locked here and sink it down. And let's do the last part for the right hip. We'll bend the knees and we'll take the right ankle and sit it on your left knee. Take your right hand to the inside of your right leg and push rotating the hips so you're pushing away and kind of upwards breathe into the outside of your right hip socket and remember you can do the entire hold doing this if the second part of the stretch is going to be a little bit too intense on your hip second part of the stretch you reach the right hand between the legs grab the knee either the back or front of the knee it doesn't matter 
pull it towards you until you feel like you're at about 90 to 95% of the stretch. Tuck your chin in down towards the throat. Bring the shoulder blades slightly together. Relax the jaw. Now I could say a lot of those things in a lot of the stretches, especially the, the jaw. You know, this takes a lot of practice to remember that, but try to keep it unhinged and then go back to full breathing with your mind concentrated inside of your right hip. And we'll be holding this for a little bit. The way I teach, one of the things I try to do is give fairly detailed explanations so that once you've done the practice once or twice, then you can follow along with your eyes closed, just noticing your body because that will allow you to access a lot more instead of having to look up and see what's going on all the time and bringing your attention external again. Now remember, as you're holding it, if you notice your right hip starts to feel like it's letting go a bit, just apply a tiny bit more pressure. So you wouldn't necessarily apply an inch more pressure, maybe a centimeter, so that you're now breathing and working into the next layer of tension. The tension, you know, this comparison you've probably heard before is like layers of an onion. You don't want to try to force yourself down to the fourth layer of the onion if you haven't released the tension in the top three, for instance. So you have to go layer by layer. It's essential to develop an enormous patience when starting to work with the internal practices. And that is a problem because we're generally very impatient because of our busy lifestyle and overstimulation. So we'll release the leg if you haven't already done that. Coming down, and then let's do the side to side. We'll bring the arms out, and you'll exhale, drop to one side, inhale, exhale. You can go a little bit slower than this if you like. I kind of like doing it a little quicker so I get that rebound effect. After you finish this breath, let's release the legs back down. Relax, arms by your side. You can have the palms down or up, however you like. And we're going to spend about a half a minute noticing the body again. You may wonder why you would want to keep doing that. What you're doing is you're training yourself. You're learning how to bring attention inwards, how to feel. We spend a huge amount of our time and energy externally. We probably spend 99% of our time focusing into the external world and what you're learning to do is at least take a couple of those percentages and begin to bring them back inside and try to see can you actually feel your body not when it's just in pain but just as it is you know we often don't even know we're in a body you could say until we start to feel a discomfort and so we're very disassociated in chronic thinking most of the time and that would explain the chronic stress it comes from there initially Okay, and then we're going to move into a little bit of sitting work. So we'll take our time coming up. And if you have a cushion, you can use the cushion um, if you're comfortable sitting like this. If you have any issues with your hips or your knees and sitting cross-legged is too hard on your hips and knees, then I would recommend getting a higher cushion or even sitting on a straight back chair. This particular practice, we're just going to do a little bit of uh, sitting work and in some of the following practices, we'll be working more upper body. Let's go into stacking the spine first and we'll do this in the next practice too. So a lot of times we don't really know what that means. How do I stack my spine? So I'll give you some ideas here to work with. First thing you do is notice your sit bones making contact with the floor or um, the chair or the cushion depending. And then move your lower body back and forth like this. So what I'm going to do, it's just a subtle movement of the lower waist. Uh, there'll be some movement here, but I'm going to concentrate here. I place the hands on my knees, 
like a lever and I'm going to slowly inhale into a deep arch of my lower back, slightly squeezing the shoulder blades together. And then I'll exhale and tuck the tailbone fairly deeply, opening the lower back and sacrum. And we'll do a couple of these breaths. You'll notice that I often have my eyes closed. Um, this is so that I have an opportunity to really feel what's going on. If you feel more comfortable always having the eyes open, that's fine. But over time, it would be good if you can learn how to bring the eyes close and go inside a little bit because the eyes tend to dominate the senses. The eyes take in a huge amount of energy. And when they're closed, I will be able to feel what's going on much more clear. Okay, so the next time you come through now, try to find the center of uh, the sacrum and the lower body. When I say the center, you're going to take most of the arch out of your lower back. So if I have a deep slouch, there's no way I can stack my spine because everything goes off. If I am slouched this way, same thing. So try to find the position of the lower back where it feels solid and almost feels like the stabilizers are engaging here. And there's no way to really explain that. You have to feel that. It just feels like I'm upright. So very small arch of the lower back at this point. This is part one. I'm going to give you a much more detailed version of working with what I call these three gateways. You have the lower, which is the lower belly, lower back. You have the center, which is the chest and the shoulder blades. And then you have the upper, which is the throat and the back of your neck. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll just work on stacking these other two. So to stack, this next part here, what I'll do is I'll lift my shoulders up, go over the shoulder blades, and then drop them down, and we'll have the palms up. And that helps open up the energy circulation here too. So when I close the palms, I close this area. When I put the palms up, it's like I'm rotating that open. So let's say you do have a lot of tension here. This will help you release that tension down towards the hands. And then the last thing, once I put the shoulders up and over, is I'll tuck the chin in towards the throat. So when you're tucking your chin, you're not bending your head forward, but rather it's like a double chin. You just draw the chin in, you'll feel the back of the neck and skull open. And it's like I'm reaching the crown of my head for the ceiling. As though this is one magnet and the ceiling is the other magnet and they're going towards each other. So there's this sense of decompression in the spine. For a lot of you, sitting like this is actually going to be quite intense. It'll definitely show you where you're holding a lot of your tensions. Let's go now into belly breathing again. So you're going to breathe from your lower belly up to the chest, so filling like a bellows. Picture the shape of a pear, so the pear is bottom heavy. You're filling up the bottom all the way to the top, and then you're releasing from the top to the bottom. And we're going to add what's called ujjayi, or ocean breathing. And We'll go deeper into various breaths later in other practices. So for now, the best way I can explain ocean breathing is, you know, when you're about to fall asleep or you're just falling asleep and you almost start snoring, you have this deep breath or you're sighing through your throat. So the easiest way to find this is first with the mouth open, it would sound like Now you want to emulate that with the mouth closed because in most yogic breath you're breathing through the nose so that that will regulate the nervous system deeper. So with the nose closed it would sound like You could maybe also call it Darth Vader breathing if you like but it sounds very much like an ocean wave going up and down a beach. So I'm creating a compression in my throat and then I'm creating a sighing sound. And that also will help relax the nervous system and stimulate the vagus nerve which comes down past uh, the neck and throat. And it also helps the mind relax because it gives it something to focus on. So we'll go into that now. So combining belly breathing all the way up and down, or I should say diaphragmic breathing with ocean breathing. So let's check into that first. Relax the mouth.
keep noticing where your mind is, notice if your concentration uh, wanders. It's going to, especially when I stop moving, that's when the mind is going to uh, probably wander even more. When I'm moving my body, it's a little bit easier because there's something to focus on. And we're going to go into a deeper breath, still using ocean breath. Um, if you've studied yoga or yogic breaths, there's an awful lot of uh, different versions, different types. When I want to promote parasympathetic, the relaxation response to my nervous system, I can prolong the exhale. So we'll do a count of two, four to begin with. So one, Two is the inhale using ocean breath. And then one, two, three, four is the exhale using ocean breath. So. Again, inhaling. If you find doing two and four is easy, you could move to three, six, or keep going. You could go four, eight, five, ten, six, twelve. But what you're doing here is you're doubling the exhale. Okay, so you're concentrating on the exhale, which then brings the nervous system down. Okay, there's different forms of breath. Some breaths in yoga are energizing, using uh, breath of fire and so on. Let's do this for another minute. Again, you could pause this if you want to do it for up to five minutes or longer. As you're doing it, remember to keep your jaw relaxed. By now, a lot of you are starting to really feel this stack posture. When I sit stack like this, it's going to show me where my tension is. One of the other principles that we are working with here is to not resist what's happening inside your nervous system. Okay, so once I'm concentrated internally and feeling, I also want to make sure that I'm not resisting what I'm feeling. So if I'm sitting like this and my shoulder starts to really bug me, you can acknowledge it, but don't try to go there and start shifting and getting away from it because I can't release any tension that way. I only release tension in my body by making contact with it in a way that is, you could say, almost more neutral. Okay, When I resist something, it contracts. Okay, As the old saying says, whatever you resist will persist. Okay, and that's very true about the body. So your two principles of working with this are concentration, non-resistance, or concentration, surrender, whatever word you want to use. There's many words for this. Okay, so we'll go into a little bit uh, more stretch or movement. Let's first come out if you'd like to and shake out the legs. Just give the legs a good shake. We're going to wind up the practice. As I said, this isn't a whole lot of upper body stuff. We'll do that next. Roll in the ankles around, and then go the other way, rolling around. We'll do a little bit of work for the shoulders here. So we'll come back to sitting. Stacking the spine. running the arms out. So we're going to reach out, inhale, middle fingers are touching. As I do this now, I'm going to push the hands towards the ceiling, arch the wrist back. The more you arch the wrist back, the more you're going to stretch the connective tissue down the arms into the back. As you push up now, you'll take just a little bit of an arch of the back and then pull the chin down in towards the chest pushing. So this is more of a yang stretch. It's a little bit active. You're pushing, but keeping your breath regulated. And then you're going to breathe from the wrist all the way down into the center of your back. It 
The key here is, of course, maintain that deep breathing. If you start to hold your breath because there's tension, that's once again back into resistance. On your next exhale, open. So I'm going to exhale down and I'm going to bring the elbows just a little bit lower than the shoulders. So notice if you bring the elbows higher than the shoulders, it jams them up. So you bring them just slightly lower, open the palms wide, extend as though the elbows are pulling the shoulder down. So imagine the elbows are very heavy and they're drawing the uh, top of the humerus out of the socket, opening. And then let's hold that, go back to full belly breathing all the way up and down. Try to relax the shoulders down. Keep the chin tucked in. As I said earlier, if this gets too intense or any posture gets too intense, just come out of it. But there is a fine line that you're working with. We have to be able to work into our tension, but we don't want to create more blockages. From here, I'm going to exhale down. And the last thing here we'll do for the shoulders is you're going to clasp your fingers behind your back like this. Lift the shoulders up. Straighten out your back, squeeze the shoulder blades together and push the top of the hands down into the floor. And then tuck your chin in and reach the crown for the ceiling. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Breathe from the front of one shoulder across the chest to the other. This again is an active stretch, so you're purposely squeezing the shoulder blades together and pulling them down. That should give you a fairly deep release right across the connective tissue of the upper chest and shoulders. And release. Last thing we'll do here from sitting, I'll place the palms on the knees and then we'll go through a whole rotation of the thoracic using the breath. So I'll open up one rib cage like this then I'm going to exhale as I tuck my chin and tailbone and open my shoulder blades till I get to the other side. And then inhale as you roll forward. Now as I roll forward, I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together, coming across, opening this rib again, coming through, exhaling, open the shoulder blades, open this rib cage, coming through, inhaling. Bring your attention inwards and try to feel the inside of your torso and thoracic. As you're doing this, you're pretty much massaging out all the joints, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, the ribs, the spine, the hips, everything is being moved here. And then we'll reverse the direction. So we're here, we're gonna come back to the other side, exhale, tuck the chin and tailbone, open the back till you get over, then inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together, roll across the front. Do one more breath. After you come through this time, Stack the shoulders one last time before we go into Shavasana, and then we're going to do a couple of really deep release breaths. So I'll inhale through the nose, exhale out the mouth, releasing like this. Kind of like your sign, you're decompressing, releasing another one. letting everything go. Good. Let's unwind the legs. We can give them a little shake and we're going to be spending you know, a good couple minutes in Shavasana. Same thing if you want to go into Shavasana now and spend quite a bit of time there you can just turn this off or pause it. That's up to you. Uh, a nice way I like to come into Shavasana is uh, this way here. I'm going to bring my heels up into the corners of the mat like this and I'll be upright and then using my breath again to come down. So I'll take a deep inhale, and when I exhale, 
palms up, releasing myself down one vertebrae at a time. So I'm exhaling, rolling into the mat, tucking the chin, and then letting the body go completely. You just did a lot of deep stretching, and more importantly, you did a lot of deep breathing for the soul practice. Now take a moment and scan your body and simply notice what do you feel. And what do you feel that might be different from the beginning? So some of the signs that the nervous system is relaxing is a sense of expansion in the body. You might feel waves or circulation going up various parts of the body. You might feel heat. You might feel like you're really sunk into the floor. If you feel these sensations, then your body, your mind, nervous system is moving more towards parasympathetic releasing, which is expansion. So the more I relax, the more I expand. And on the opposite side, the more I mentally stress, the more I contract. So it's important to notice this so you can begin to notice what's happening inside your body, not just in practice, but on a day-to-day -day basis, which is actually the real practice. As they say, life is the practice. When you're doing this on the mat, you're just warming up for life. As you're lying here, you're not necessarily trying to control your breathing. You're just allowing your breath to take on whatever rhythm feels comfortable. But you are keeping your attention on your body. So you want to do your best not to let the mind just wander here when you're in Shavasana. Shavasana is integration. You know, I look at it kind of like resetting your nervous system. Like your computer freezes up. What do you do? You reset it and then it works again. Stress basically uh, freezes up the nervous system inside of you. And the deep breathing practice and the deep stretching practice will help reset that nervous system. So we'll take our time coming up. And as I said, if you want to lie longer, um, you can just turn this off or pause. Otherwise, we'll come up to close the practice. So coming up in either fetal posture or however you like, Fetal posture is always a nice way to come up. You can just roll over to one side, relax. And then slowly making our way up. It's always good to close out the practice. That's a way of honoring the work and honoring yourself. Try to come back into a full stack spine again. Just check into that for a moment. And then bringing the arms out to the side, we're going to inhale up, palms together, reaching up, and exhale, prayer posture coming down in front of the heart center. Relax your elbows so your shoulders are open. This is a good time for intention or prayer or whatever feels comfortable for you. And then we'll take a bow, closing out. Namaste. Thank you.